Hi everyone, what's up? Joshua here from Alternative Brewing. And today we're gonna to be installing Coffee Sensors flow control device to a machine with an E61 group head like the Belletta and Encio that I have here. This device, compatible with many E61 group heads, once installed, it will increase the abilities of a standard nine bars of pressure operation of the machine to include real-time and precise regulation on the rate of extraction through an espresso shot by controlling the quantity of the water that flows through the ground coffee. And this opens up a door to what's known as flow profiling, which consists of approaches to extraction, such as low pressure pre-infusions, Italian lever style espresso extractions, as well as ramp up and ramp down methods to explore new flavors or completely avoid unwanted ones. So if you're looking to shop the Coffee Sensor FCD, you can from this link up above. Let's jump in now though, see how to install it and how to get the best out of it. So the Coffee Sensor FCD pack comes with mostly everything you'll need. You'll find the device's main body, two control handles which are designed slightly different to fit any E61 machine, the group pressure gauge with a 0 to 16 bar reading, the group head spring which is used to cut out the automatic pre-infusion on a machine, and then there are seals, tape and an allen key that make up the rest, as well as detailed instructions on how to install it. What you also might want to have handy when it comes time for installation is an open wrench, shifter or multi-grips for loosening the nuts on the mushroom valve around the group head, as well as a measuring glass or jug to accurately measure the water from the group head, or even just a good set of espresso scales like the Akai Lunas so you know exactly how much water in grams and ounces is being delivered from the machine. So our first port of call is to know the standard flow rate from your machine, as each machine will differ slightly from brand to brand and model to model. So you wanna understand the base flow rate of water that comes out of the group head without that flow device installed, and that way we have a reference point once the flow control is in place. To do this, we simply have to have the machine on, heated up and ready to pull a shot. With the porter filter removed, place a measuring jug and the scales under the group head and run the machine for 20 seconds and note the amount of water that was captured. And then do this three times over. Then once you have these three measurements, add them up and then divide that sum by three to get the average amount of water that was dispensed. Next, all we need to do is divide that amount by 20 to discover the base flow rate per second from the machine. And then before installing the flow device, we wanna make sure our machine is turned off, leave it to cool down, and then always switch it off at the wall and unplug it just to be safe. So on installation, begin by wrapping the mushroom valve on top of the current group head with the black plastic. This black tape has been provided to stop any nasty scratches to the machine whilst we're working on it. Then unscrew the old mushroom valve off by removing that nut and the upper sleeve assembly with the O-ring, but leave in place the spring and that brew valve below it. Next, with the new white Teflon gasket placed onto the FCD, begin to tighten the new mushroom valve in place where the old one was. Then we're gonna use the Allen key to remove the small closure plug on the front of the group head. Here we wanna use a little bit of white Teflon tape that's been provided to wrap around the thread of the pressure gauge, being careful not to block up that small reading hole with tape. Then insert the gauge where the screw once was and begin to tighten by hand, holding onto the body of the gauge, not by its face. And now what we have to do is cancel out any automatic pre-infusion by replacing the spring in the pre-brew cylinder. To do this, we need to unscrew the larger of the two nuts found directly underneath the group head and then switch out the current spring for the one that was supplied in the FCD pack. This is by far the hardest part of the installation, so you might wanna get someone to help you push that pre-brew cylinder up whilst you try screwing it back into place nice and tight to avoid any threading. So from here, we just need to decide which handle is best suited for our machine and where you want the zero or that closed position to be pointing towards. Now the valve will open anti-clockwise and close clockwise, for me, I prefer the handle set at nine o'clock in the off position, so it's always opening left to right. 
Now we've completed the full installation of the flow control device, it's now time to test and calibrate it on the machine. First thing before any calibration is we want to make sure there aren't any leaks around the devices. So with the machine on and heat it up, you want to place a blind filter into the filter basket as if you're going to back flush the machine, stand back and then lift the lever to see if there's any leaks around the devices. And if there's none, we can happily move on. But if there is, then it is best to ensure that those seals are seated properly or there's enough tape around that pressure valve. So it is advised that once again, let the machine cool down, undo everything, check those seals and then retighten from the beginning before moving on. So remembering right at the beginning of this video how we worked out the base flow rate of the machine in seconds, now it's time as best practice to understand the flow rate from each quarter turn of the FCD in a similar way. This way we can perform educated adjustments on the flow of the espresso as well as know where that ceiling or reference point is in turning the valve open. So as before, we will measure out the water dispensed over a 20 second period with the FCD open at each quarter turn and then do this three times to average out their flow rates. And you can do this all the way up to the original reference point of the machine or up to the maximum two full turns of the FCD. Now this seems like a lot to do, but as mentioned, I can now approach brewing espresso knowing exactly what flow I'll be adding to the bed of coffee. And I can look to replicate flow profiles to obtain a better tasting espresso. And in terms of flow profiles, there's loads to learn and taste from. A typical lever shot is going to open the gauge at a quarter turn for say three seconds or so, and then turn it off again and wait five seconds. Then we're gonna ramp it up to a full turn of the FCD and then begin slowly bringing that back down to the closed position, watching your shot time and the weight of the espresso. And in this way, you can speed things up or even slow things down at that very moment to control the extraction over the course of the shot. And that's the coffee sensor flow control device for an E61 group head machine. It's a rabbit hole of an adventure that is a must have device for every coffee aficionado and espresso drinker. And if espresso making wasn't hard enough with all those other parameters you have to control, then adding another isn't going to make it any easier either. However, it is often the case that grind adjustments are less necessary due to the fact you do control the speed of the water through the puck and then there are those other benefits of low, long and steady brews or pre and post fusions. These will add further flavor dimensions, unattainable in any other way. So it really is a device you'll wanna use. Now, if you have any questions on this product, throw them in the comment section down below and we'll get straight back to you. Don't forget to hit that little bell icon on your screen and then that way you stay notified when we bring out new videos just like this every week. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.